Hi, David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Today's video is all about how to do a foundation for a carport. What we're going to be doing here is showing step-by-step -step instructions on how to do a carport. It's going to have a footing all the way around the outside perimeter where the structure sets down attaches to the concrete. So this is the kind of stuff that you need to know if you want to do a carport, how to attach to the concrete and what you need in that concrete to attach it properly. Basically what we're going to do here is do it on the side of his existing garage. And you can see the driveway here. We're on a downhill slope. So that curb there kind of diverts the water runoff. So that we're going to leave in place because we don't want the water to rush into the new carport or garage or house because beyond that garage is the house. So we've dug out the dirt so far and now I'm just going to use the hoe attachment on the same equipment. I'm just going to scratch it out. I'm not going to do a really nice job on digging it out because I got to go in there on an angle. So I don't have a swivel bucket or I don't have an offset on the um, hoe or anything like that. Nothing real tricky. It's just a basic piece of equipment that, you know, loosens up the dirt for you and helps you to uh, get it out of there a little bit easier. Cause I had to, you know, this basically, that's what I was breaking up. I was dragging my little prongs, my one foot bucket through there, loosening up the rock so I could uh, shovel it out basically. Could have been done by hand totally it would just been a lot harder and a little bit more time there's an existing fence post that had to be removed it had a massive footing on it so we left the footing intact because the front of this entrance of the carport doesn't have a um deep in footing only the rear and two sides. We did go a little deeper though on everything. We went about five inches deep on the whole package. And then we recessed around the entire perimeter another, we got about, you know, 10 to 12 inch deep perimeter footing all the way around. And then also we dropped some rebar in there. We got two number three rebars around the perimeter. Now on the side of the existing garage, what I've done here, because we're going really close up and tight to that weep screed of the existing stucco, I slapped some foam under there, glued that with some 3M adhesive which is the easiest. If you want to ever glue any kind of expansion material to anything, go with the 3M, you know, spray adhesive. It beats masonry nails, you know, concrete nails, really beats them up. Makes it so much easier and, and cleaner. And you know what? You don't have to worry about a nail when you're trying to strike it into the foundation, flying back into your eye. Well, that's what I really like about it the most. So we are, we got Kenny out here today. He's not pumping the concrete, but he is going to help finish this. And a matter of fact, you're going to see the great idea he came up with. And I was planning initially just to go ahead and dry pack this after the fact after the structure went up but he decided you know what i can do this i'm going to fill this in and dry pack it under this curb so we're about six inches below back of curb the bottom of it so we got a big dirt exposure you know possible erosion a lot of issues there so what he came up with is that we'll just throw a few buckets or a wheelbarrow of concrete on the side, let it harden in that bucket. When it gets about right, 
we'll pack it in to that curb face. And that's what he did. And we're going to show that process and how it worked. It worked out real nice. Here I am, free screeding on a, uh, with a six foot Milwaukee red stick. I also got the four foot red stick when I even get tighter situations, but in this case, it was six footers. Here's my new tool that I've been waiting to use, man. I bought this thing, I had to go down to Vegas, decorative concrete in Las Vegas, Nevada. Drove all the way down there, it's a little drive, you know to get there from here about two hours, hour and a half, something somewhere in there, depending on road construction, of yeah, course. That's like never ending. So, you know, we got it done. We got over there in Nevada. We picked up this roller tamp and uh, it was a magnificent new addition to my fleet, I have to say. You know, the hand tamps are nice and stuff, but you know, why fight it when you got a roller? Just push it out there and bang it home but it laid it down flat, got it good. When you run the bowl float, you're just pushing cream, you know, everything you can ever dream for. Now here's Kenny and his magnificent plan. What he's doing is pulling a little bit. You know, we're right now the concrete's not going off that quick. We got some time to play with stuff right now. We're down around 45 degrees in the morning. We're getting up to 70, we're lucky. But we're not freezing, which is nice. So we can pour year round over here in Arizona, but we got some time right now to work with it. And that's exactly what's happening here. Kenny's working with it, making the most of what we can do with it, allowing, you know, where we're at, the time of year, and all those different things come into play. So basically what he's done here is he packed it a little bit on there really loosely. He can't pack it hard at this point because it would slough off into the slab, raise that slab elevation. And when you drop your rail for the structure, you know, it may not set flat, so it's a very tedious process. This is a doghouse out here in Fort Mojave, Arizona. It has a built-in air conditioner in it, and I really love it. Although the dog, you know, it doesn't want to stay in there. It wants to stay in the house. But you could have a dog outdoors full-time, you know, for year-round with that particular system. Brings that doghouse down to around 80 degrees in 120. So that ain't bad. You can live with that. Here's the tricks right here that Kenny's showing. Just doing a little by little. There's no hurry. He's got plenty of time. So he's just kind of working it. He's got the big rock in there, packed in there tight. And we had about a two to three inch recess. So he packed that in and as, as the slabs got harder and the, the concrete in the bucket, you know, didn't dry as quickly because it was encased in a bucket. So the water couldn't evaporate out as quickly. So that's what he's done here. Waited for that slab to harden so you could pack that curb. We have a Doug Odell on the far side running whip and then I'm here on the um, close side with another whip. We're just gonna whip this thing out. Uh, Basically, we're gonna do on this carport. Um, he wants a smooth finish. 
which makes sense. Really? You're in an enclosed area and you're not getting a lot of water you know and environment, you know, coming down yeah, on your concrete. That, that tells me. You're going to be pretty protected in here from freeze and thaw. Although we never get freeze, we never get thaw. You might get a little rain at most, but I guess you could say the best scenario for a smooth finish in this particular region would be the easy cleanup because we do get a lot of dust storms, a lot of sand accumulation, things of that nature. If you have a smooth finish, well, it's a lot easier to get rid of. You can use just a uh, Milwaukee vac blower. You can use any kind of blower you might have, blow it off or, or a broom, maybe even a squeegee, you know, to push that debris off of there. But either way, we're gonna do a smooth trial finish. I initially thought, well, let's just whip it and forget it. And then Doug was like, oh, let's hit it. Let's hit it once, you know, after we whipped it really nice and tight. Let's hit it once off the boards and see what we can get. And this is a flat slab, so sliders are working great on it. But you know what? I don't know if you've ran into it, but you get on a hillside with sliders, they don't work very well. They slide down the hill before you can finish the concrete. And you're at the bottom and you, you should still be at the top. So there's Kenny working the magic. He has a little special broom that he broke off, finishing that concrete burn in and that backside curve face. Okay, this is not the very next day. We actually waited two days to let this cure out because that's how cold it is. We don't want to cut it too early because we don't want spalling and chipping from the blade. So I, I gave it an extra day, but I've got a really nice system here. Everything's battery powered. So I wasn't really reliant on whether or not Ted was here to supply me with electricity for all my tools. I just put a popped a battery in it and just, you know, drove it home. Got this little four and a half inch DeWalt too to finish out my cuts, but I'm leaving a very minimal impact on the environment with this entire project. You can tell all the stuff I'm going through to try to retain that dust with the vacuum on the cutter. You know, all the things I've done here is just beyond you know, anything that's ever expected of anyone on a job site like this. There's your form coming out. I've got my cuts in. We're looking really clean. This thing is flat as a pancake, too. I was very surprised. Considering we were working between two fixed structures, I had to um, kind of freehand it almost. I had some screed, overhead screed set up, but... A lot of it was freehand, really, because I couldn't snap a line along that backside of curb because it didn't go down low enough to snap a line on. So I had to hang some screeds over there. It was a tricky application here, but you know what? From what I'm looking at right now, I think we got it done. I think we succeeded here. I'm proud to say that I will be happy to go back at this job any point in time to do more work if need be. Thank you for your cooperation and really happy about your attention to detail. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell because that's the secret weapon that gets you notified when I drop the next video. And it's going to be absolutely magnificent. Hotel complete. Concrete.